Hello and a very warm welcome viewers. You're watching the brand new edition of India Fights Back with your host Kriti Mishra. People infected with the Delta variant of COVID-19 produce far more virus than those affected with the original version of the coronavirus, making it very easy to spread. Researchers in China found that viral load, a measure of the density of viral particles in the body, is roughly 1,000 times higher in people infected with the Delta variant than those infected with the original coronavirus strain. According to current estimates, the Delta variant could be more than twice as transmissible as the original strain of SARS-CoV-2, the virus causing COVID-19. The variant has now become the predominant strain and has spread to at least 124 countries. This team has also tracked 62 people who were quarantined after exposure to COVID-19 and tested their viral load every day throughout the course of infection to see how it changed over time. Researchers then compared participants' infection pattern with those of 63 people who contracted the original SARS-CoV-2 strain in 2020. The findings posted pre-print showed that the virus was strict detectable in people with the Delta variant four days after exposure. On the other hand, the original strain took an average six days to be present in people. This suggests that Delta replicates much faster. And for deeper insights on this, I'm joined by Professor N.K. Ganguly, former Director General, Indian Council of Medical Research, and Dr. D.K. Gupta, Chairman, Felix Hospital. Welcome to Sunset Television, gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us. And Professor Ganguly, coming to you first, what sets the Delta variant apart from the other variants and what makes it so concerning, sir? Actually, uh, although a lot of mutations happen in these viruses, only few become pandemic and go to many countries. So after the Wuhan strain, the, uh, the British strain, they went, uh, it became pandemic and it was 10 times more transmissible than the Wuhan strain. Now, when the Delta strain came, it, uh, it is 100 times more transmissible than the uh, uh, British strain. So about 1000 times more transmissible. And, and its colonization in the nose is, is around 1000 particles, viral particles in the nose. So it becomes a very dense infection uh, in the nose when it goes. And at this given moment, 80% of all strains in all countries is now Delta strain. The concern comes in the Delta strain that it also is changing a little bit of epidemiology. And the British strain was not, uh, it was transmissible, but the death rate or its, its uh, uh, pathogenicity was a little bit questionable that whether it is more or not. But here there is no question. It is much more pathogenic, much more virulent, and also infects younger people. Uh, people. And transmissibility, I have already told, is very high. So the main concern which, uh, which affects, uh, which is concerning people, that whether vaccine will prevent this or not, because breakthrough infections occur. The recent data has come from United States after the Pfizer vaccines and from UK has come after the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is like COVID shield. So Pfizer vaccine, uh, even, with, even if you give Pfizer vaccine, you may get breakthrough infection to the tune of 10 to 20 percent. But it is mild infection. You are not hospitalized and you don't die. So, but the, if you get a, uh, if you don't get a vaccination then 98 percent of those who do not get vaccination at the moment they are in the hospitals and the deaths is because of this so this is a pandemic now of unvaccinated people so uh, the one of the things message we, we should say that people say that we may get breakthrough infection. So wh whether the vaccine is protecting or not protecting, vaccine is protecting. The end point was severe infection or, or 
prevention from the hospitalization. That was the end point of the trial. Only problem is that the that the Pfizer vaccine is around 90% uh, effective in this after two doses, not a single, not only single dose. And now it has found that if you give it a little uh, uh, space, about uh, eight to ten weeks, ten weeks you get a better response, like the like the AstraZeneca or Covishield vaccine. Covishield vaccine is around 60% or less effective, but it is effective. The British data is showing that it also is effective and it will prevent you from dying and getting hospitalized. A very few percent, very small percent of them, particularly in the healthcare worker and others, who get a heavy dose of infection after, after two doses of vaccination or have comorbidities may get a severe infection, but it's a very small percentage. All right, so that's a very small percentage, as you're saying. But since uh, we are talking about transmissibility, Dr. Gupta, that is the biggest concern so what is the evidence so far on transmissibility of the Delta variant? Great. I think Dr. Gamuli has explained very well. And I would like to tell you that this is a new variant and there's a variant of concern as leveled by WHO. And it was first isolated in India in late last year and around between October to December. And there is a change in basically spike protein. The mutation is actually in the spike protein, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. And they, because of this spike protein mutation, the viruses this may become more uh, transmissible and it attaches with the cells very easily. And therefore, it will be uh, it will be uh, helping in the penetration into the cells, also helping in the replication of the, this virus and increasing the viral load inside the body also. Transmissible is high rate is it is around 120 percent more transmissible than this previous alpha variant that is but identified in the uk and it is around 225 percent more transmissible than wuhan virus original wuhan virus it means it spreads fast it spreads and in fact around 2.5 times more easily more effectively to other people than original Wuhan viruses means it is more spreading fast also means R0 value that is uh, normally it should be less than one for uh, controlling this uh, epidemic uh, pandemic but it is more than 1.2 1.3 in these cases we have seen where the transmission or infectivity is at more than 10 percent in India also like in northeast state Mara, Maharashtra Kerala and few other districts where transmission rate is high so the R0 value is quite high for this virus and if the transmission is high it will attack fast and definitely as we discussed that viral load is quite high with this virus therefore whenever person is infected they has a high inoculum of virus and this high inoculum of virus results in high level of viremia means high level of viruses inside your blood and whenever this is a high level of viruses in your blood it will result in more inflammatory markers release of more tumor necrosis factors il6 and other serotonins and there are so many inflammatory markers they are released because of this high level of viremia and indirectly they cause or indirectly they damage your lungs especially lungs uh, damage your organs, especially lungs and other organs like kidney, heart and brain and uh, GI systems. Yes. Because of this high level of viremia and high level of interleukins and other inflammatory markers, the symptomatic rates is high, means patients are more symptomatic and if they are having this more symptom, then they are having prone to develop more symptoms and prone to develop more complications like ARDS, multi-organ dysfunction, kidney failure, liver dysfunction, GI dysfunction. Because of these all multi-organ dysfunction, multi-organ failure, chances of death are high. It means this, it is more virulent, more infectious, spreads more fast. Secondary attack is very high as compared to Wuhan viruses. And we have identified around in 186 countries now the, the main dominant variant is Delta variant. Yes. In 186 countries, I'm telling you, the most important thing, especially those countries where in, in this um, uh, vaccination rate is quite low, it's less than 15%. Like there are Bangladesh, Belgium, uh, Maldives, Malaysia, Denmark, Canada, Australia, in all these countries, even where the, the, the vaccination is high also, 
current strain isolated is maximum it is around 80 to 90 percent is delta variant means now the pandemic is overwhelmed with this new virus strain and this virus is its new strain is variant of concern for everybody if we talk about the symptoms of this virus they are same as like in any upper respiratory infection, in a study done in United Kingdom, it is found that in 90% cases, the patient were suffering from only cold symptoms, like yes. they were having headache, sore throat, fever, yes, and sir. running. These were most common symptoms. Atypical symptoms can be like loose motion, vomiting, diarrhea, or some yes, other sir. symptoms, rashes like that. But mostly these are the common symptoms. Therefore, we should not ignore these symptoms. And in India, still, we are not having a like benchmark vaccination is still we are lagging behind therefore people needs to be careful and we should follow all non pharmaceuticals measures non pharmaceutical measures means we have to follow all covid appropriate behaviors like yes. mask bearing social distancing or not touching your mouth nose and eyes avoiding crowded places indoor places where there is a poor ventilation and especially those people who are sick or having this type of symptom they should not go outside and we have done an right, there sir. is a study done by the icma they have found that covid uh, these patients suffering from this delta variant also they can be uh, prevented from death or from the severe infection or severe complications by giving the vaccine like Covaxin and we have a COVID shield also. Right. These both these vaccines currently available in India, they are preventing death against Absolutely, sir. Also, yes. around 92% for somebody who has got single dose and around 98% to 99% who have received both the doses. It means there is the only things we should know that vaccine is the most effective till now for preventing death and complications, right, sir. And the death, death and complications from this deadly Delta variant. Uh, Delta variant. There are other things we should know also regarding Delta variant. Like there are Delta could lead hyper local outbreaks. It has been found in several in, uh, countries, right? He, because of this Delta variant, there were outsurge, there were hyper local mm -hmm. outbreaks, and these hyper local outbreaks can result in bigger epidemics of bigger pandemics also absolutely so, so that that concern. of course is a cause of uh, bigger concern but uh, before we talk about the other aspects of delta variant let's talk about the severity part of it professor ganguly what is the evidence on severity of the delta variant what is the evidence telling us so far the, uh, the severity is very high and this has been now named as a thrombogenic inflammatory covid-19 virus so it really, there, there are some uh, people who have thrombogenic problem, who have coronary artery disease, who have other, uh, who have stroke, who are potentially taking blood thinners and other things. This virus becomes very, very severe for them. And inflammation in some persons is so severe that it, uh, it comes to almost a multi-organ inflammatory, inflammatory disease and very difficult to really control this inflammation. There is a surge of cytokines, cytokine, a big cytokine storm. And some of these cytokines, you need multiple um, uh, in um, uh, interventions to control the cytokines. And that is why um, the, uh, for controlling the, the uh, corticosteroids were used and there are some targeted antibodies which are also being used to do that but this becomes so difficult to do the, the targeted one targeted antibodies alone that you have to do several and becomes very very expensive yeah. some very new drugs and some and one more thing happens when it becomes severe because it it doesn't only uh, infect one lung cell it has a capability of joining lung cells and it and which is not found in other viruses and so the those in the lung when it enters becomes very very high and as told by dr gupta that many times it has a multi organ failure like septicemia because ace receptors are almost everywhere yes. and in some diseases the ace receptors increase 
exponentially in some of the organs. So, so you could get a kidney damage, you could get, uh, and brain damage is something which is coming up very big at this given moment. Previously, we were knowing that maybe some gulen barre syndrome and some, uh, some uh, stroke or something which is happening, but the real sense um, um, brain damage in the form of even strong dementia, strong imbalance in the gait, the, the accumulation of the fluid in the brain ventricles. It is it is becoming very every day we are learning some having some new information about this. So this is clinically very serious. Uh, yeah. uh, substance. So some of the one more thing it has got, these viruses are between S1, S2, a furan like particle, which which works, which in, links with a um, um, receptor, which is known as beta integrin. And that makes this virus much more, its furan part is much more exposed and it can really have multiple joining methods and creates a lot of cell signaling uh, pathways which are very, very de detrimental and leads to massive cell death. So this virus is very, very serious. But only good thing is this, that we have now new drugs which are coming yes. up and very soon we will have these drugs. The molinopiravir is one of those which is undergoing trial at this given moment. And, and this in two days, it produces virus load more than 90%. And so we have some very good nasal shields in the form of nitric oxide spray. One Indian company has made it and very soon it will hit the market. That will again reduce the number of viruses in the nose. And, and the two Indian companies are making fab two fragments of the, so previously we, were, we had Regenron and Eli Lilly, et cetera. Now two Indian companies have, uh, are, have made now fab two based uh, equine antibodies. And these, and these are also undergoing trial. So vaccine will be only one of the things, but public health measure wise, um, the two doses of vaccine, I will again repeat two doses of vaccine, mm -hmm. if given at an appropriate spacing. And uh, we know that the population which it should get normally by the mathematical model modeling, about 80% people of the country should be immunized. Yes. Now we have license for the children also. The Pfizer has got the license for children. In India also children license is getting, we are getting. Pregnant woman license is already there. So we will be able to immunize majority of our population, and uh, but not le less. As told by Dr. Gupta, although we have immunized much more than what the United States has immunized, but if you take our total population, it is not significant. So right. we have, I don't know whether we will be able to expand it in a way or we will take few more months to really immunize significant population, but this should be the vaccine fear, which is there in the rural areas and other places. We need to remove that. We Absolutely. also need to see that this is a, this is a disease which affects the poor most the marginalized, distant population, poor tribal population, homeless people, street people, they, they are much more affected with this virus than others. And we, whatever we do, we need to have the ethics and equity. And these guys are not digitally savvy guys. Mm -hmm. These guys don't know how to really even, even go and access these things. So we right. should have a very strong communication strategy and we should reach out as reach out as much as possible and remove the vaccine fear and vaccinate as many as possible. Absolutely. So this vaccine hesitancy still in some pockets of the country that has to go. But uh, there's another important aspect to it. Dr. Gupta, I'd like to understand, is the Delta variant connected with the cases of reinfection that we are seeing in the country? Yes, you are absolutely correct because we have seen that it is not like antibodies 
those who are made by previous infection previous alpha variant or any wuhan virus variant they are not protecting protect giving protection against this variant it means it can cause reinfection among those who are already infected with the covid in recent past or maybe last year they should be also be precautious they should be also be careful regarding this variants because we have seen that in, in uh, like uh, britain there is a the people are immunized also around more than 50 percent still we are got getting this this variant in 94 percent also in india also we have seen several cases where patient who have ha, has uh, antibodies from the wuhan virus uh, strain of virus still they have got reinfected with delta variant during april and may because of this new surge and new infection. it means it is not giving any protection against this new strain it, it will be, we should be careful but still there is a positive news a good news that the current available vaccine they are effective against this delta variant also yes. even delta plus variant also it means there is a need for ramp up Uh, ramping up the vaccination process because we need to vaccinate around 80% of the population as told by dr ranguli hmm. by the month of december 2201 otherwise it will be quite late uh, and definitely for this we need to vaccinate at least 80 to 90 lakhs person per day currently it is around 30 to 40 lakhs per day only and also i will tell you that currently we are not over with the second wave also still yeah. we are getting around 40 to 40000 cases per day even deaths are ranging between 500 to 1000 per day it means there is a should be i think uh, alertness in everybody's mind and government should take response accountability and people should be responsible for controlling the second wave also and n- for not emerging emergence of the third wave otherwise it will be very difficult because we have a huge population it will it, it is around 140 cr the um, population density is quite high as compared to developed countries and our gdp expenses investment on health and infrastructure is quite low it is around 2% as compared to the developed countries those who are investing more than 10 to 15% on their health and infrastructure so that's why if we got any third wave with this delta variant or delta plus variant or any other variant that is more transmissible more infectious more virulent then it will be definitely very 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 uh, well, dangerous for everybody so i think this need of our we should ramp up vaccinations and till 80% population is not immunized we have to follow we have to follow covid appropriate behavior at ground level and we should be responsible and government should reinforce these um the strict measures to uh, control uh, all these uh, gatherings on public places mm. tourist places and they should also implement forcefully if needed the covid approved behavior at ground level i think all right uh, but talking about vaccination of course uh, professor ganguly as you were saying that that is the biggest concern right now whether these mutations would evade our present vaccines also but sir, i'd just like to understand can this virus mutate even further to become even more worse the who has created another list of five viruses which are virus which uh, which we should keep uh, in in our eyes these are they, are they have not become yet virus of concern and some of these have appeared in india also the kappa virus has yeah. um, um, appeared in india there are some in the some in the rajasthan about 11 strain in rajasthan some strains in up the good thing is this now the laboratories which were not there in the detection they are actually in the healthcare they are detecting it so that is a good news for india and uh, so we we need to but they none of them has become pandemic strains as the as the alpha and delta viruses have become so they they at the moment they are appearing locally they are trying to establish themselves the and if they are able to establish themselves by some um, environmental factor or human host uh, interaction it they may become pandemic so the future vaccines which are coming up now pfizer has said that please take a take a booster and this booster will contain a cocktail of the delta variant and and even the region on etc are creating antibodies against delta variant right. so the f- future future vaccines which will be perhaps a, a booster dose will have these things and they will be protecting then we will be really reaching where we will be doing reasonably well so, and the de- 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 
people, the companies have started preparing them. They have even started trial with them. Right. However, the, what, the problem is this, that at this given moment, even countries like America, some of the states, Missouri, etc., there are some states where only 30% vaccination is there. And if there is a 30% vaccination, spread is very high. It is so high that uh, that it has jumped 600% in those places in United States. And let me, let me emphasize that if one place in India has this vaccine, the entire India has this, uh, these mutation, mutant strains growing and spreading, it will spread to India. So right. one of the things which Dr. Gupta emphasized, I will re-emphasize that in America, they said that you need not wear mask in, in UK also, and they too rapidly opened up. We should wait for two, three months because our vaccination rate will catch up better in two, three months. Right. We should we should see that our economy uh, is developing, but very cautiously. We should not make anything which will make people gather and and and, and celebrate and spread this virus much more than the the and spread from not only Kerala and Maharashtra and Karnataka and their entire India. So at this moment, Northern India has lesser rate, but we should not be fooled. We need next three months, I will say, every person himself should be uh, putting restraint because government could not, cannot really force everyone to do those. Absolutely. And one more thing I will caution that when we are opening up schools, some of the children in India will not be vaccinated, but teachers should be vaccinated. All teachers should be vaccinated. We should uh, invest in school because if the children don't go to school, they and doesn't occur. They don't Absolutely, get the sir. school meal which they were they were getting. They need to go to school, but make classroom small, make them more airy and ventilated, sanitize the schools, put money in the schools, invest in the schools, and immunize the teachers and others so that and do it gradually, do it very, very gradually so that uh, that part also comes in. So, so what I will right, sir. Advise... So the mantra remains vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. And of course, as you said, that to avert any other way, whether sparked by Delta variant or any other variant, we have to be very, very cautious and we have to follow COVID appropriate behavior at all times. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Professor Ganguly and Dr. Gupta. So viewers, that's all we had for you in this edition of India Fights Back. But before that, let me remind you once again to stay safe from the coronavirus pandemic. Remember to wear your face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and ensure that you follow physical distancing whenever you're stepping outside. These simple precautions are all it takes to defeat this pandemic. Take very good care and goodbye.